Biomaterials in Dental Sciences. In this subject, we will be discussing biomaterials in dental sciences. Our reference is Introduction to Dental Materials by Richard Van Noort, the fourth edition. Chapter 1.1 Biomaterials Safety and Biocompatibility, page 3 to 6. When a material is placed in or in contact with a human body, it is generally referred to as a biomaterial. Biomaterials may be defined as a non living material designed to interact with the biological systems. The three main areas of biomaterials are dental restorative materials, structural implants, which include oral and maxillofacial, joint implants, and joint prosthesis, also cardiovascular implants, which include catheters, valves, and blood vessels. The following pictures are examples of dental restorative materials, metallic or composite fillings, and casting alloys, and also ceramics for fixed and removable intraoral prosthesis. These images are examples of structural implants. An artificial heart or heart valve are examples of cardiovascular implants. The meaning of safety within biomaterials is that dental materials should not cause any local or systemic adverse reactions, either in the patient or in the dental personnel handling the materials. We can support the fact that they will not cause an adverse reaction from two sources, which are basic research using methods of pre-market testing, and the second method is clinical research via post-market surveillance. It is important to note that many materials have the potential of being toxic, but yet can also be beneficial. For example, many chemicals used in, the, in dental materials in their raw state would be considered highly toxic. However, it should be pointed out that safety testing is not about whether or not a material is toxic, rather it's about the risk assessment. Basically, risk assessment is whether or not a material can be used, and this depends on the risk it imposes relative to the benefit it brings. For example, zinc oxide agenol cements have been used for over 100 years, yet agenol would not pass the cytotoxicity test. Nevertheless, it is an effective temporary filling because of its ability to kill bacteria. However, if it is allowed to make contact with the pulp, the effect would be devastating, since it carries the risk of killing the pulp. Moving on, there are many other potential adverse reactions besides toxicity. For example, Irritant contact dermatitis, which includes acute toxic reaction, cumulative insult dermatitis, and paresthesia. Also, allergic contact dermatitis, oral lichnoid reaction, anaphylactic reaction, contact urticarial intolerance reactions. This image is an example of irritant contact dermatitis due to resin contact, which is basically irritation and inflammation of the skin. This slide shows the different packing methods developed by the manufacturers to ensure there is no contact between the practitioner's hand and the restorative material. Some materials are particularly likely to cause an allergic reaction. These include polymethyl methacrylate used in denture fabrication and latex rubber surgical gloves. A material may be said to be biocompatible when it has the quality of being non-destructive in the biological environment but also must interact to benefit of the patient. For example, post-operative sensitivity is a local reaction to a restorative procedure. It is often associated with the placement of a filling material, where there is an adverse pulper reaction following the operative procedure. This is mostly caused by microleakage. On the other hand, some materials have a positive effect on the pulp. For example, calcium hydroxide, which is also known as dical, induces secondary dentine formation by the pulp, which is a good example of biocompatibility. 
Also, acid etching, which involves the etching of the dental enamel by applying an acid in order to roughen the surface to increase the retention of the composite restoration. The adhesive will penetrate the dentinal tubules and block the gap between the new restoration and the tooth surface, which will eventually prevent microleakage. Corrosion is the unwanted interaction between the biological environment and the biomaterial. Most commonly, it occurs in dental amalgam. It causes discoloration of the teeth and the marginal breakdown of the filling. Examples of systemic effects of corrosion are facial eczema due to titanium dental implants, which is shown in the image on the left, and inflammation and redness of the oral mucosa, which is shown on the image on the right. Fluoride is biocompatible in low concentrations, however, if the concentration exceeds the limit, it will cause fluorosis. Finally, dental practitioners are ultimately responsible for the materials to which the patient will be exposed. They must have enough knowledge and understanding of the compositions of the materials to be used and how they might affect the patient.